Um, welcome everybody and uh, thank you for coming. The purpose of this uh, event is to celebrate our students who performed excellently in a design competition. Um, the task was to here to transform a factory <laughs> to transform the factory into a contemporary art museum. Uh, we would like to welcome uh, Cesar Mambour, who's not here. <laughs> it's on my, it's on my uh, agenda. Uh, um, so if he comes later, because he's on his way, um, we should applaud him at least uh, when he enters. Uh, uh, and of course, Gabriela Schaub, um, who organized um, this uh, competition and are the fo founders of Matam and I think uh, they deserve kind of uh, applaud uh, for you know um, not here when they come <laughs> when they come we should say we will see them okay um, but I mean it's seldom that you know that uh, that uh, someone with all this passion to go for arts and architecture and give uh, kind of uh, and organizes an award. I think uh, just as a private initiative, um, I think it's important uh, to honor this too. Um, well, uh, the the reason is, uh, I mean, of, uh, as mentioned, is that uh, that uh, our students performed very well and uh, uh, won prizes. We start like with from out of uh, five honorable mentions, they won three honorable mentions, which is already. Um, uh, excellent. Uh, from the third prize, they won because they couldn't decide the jury to have one third prize, so they split the third prize and gave two third prizes to our students as well. The second prize was won by our students, and the first prize was won by our students. So I think uh, that shows that our hey, so we won seven prizes out of nine, uh, and I think that shows that our department is. Uh, kind of uh, in Lebanon, uh, kind of the, the leading player in architectural education. And uh, um, I think uh, that's uh, something very positive and uh, something to look up. And it's also to encourage all the students in future to participate in competitions and to look for competitions and that they are really uh, competitive at uh, all levels. And uh, please, uh, to the students, uh, uh, go ahead and seek for competitions and, and bring them to the department so we can assign them also in studios and uh, maybe we can repeat kind of such, or I'm sure we can repeat such excellent, uh, um, such an excellent performance. Okay, so um, let's move. Uh, just a few words about the competition. The competition is, uh, the site is in Alita. Alita is, uh, Kind of the map is just close to um, uh, just Rahim, eh? um, close to Biblos, and uh, go, go ahead. And the project uh, scope and the tasks is uh, uh, to establish a contemporary art museum in Lebanon uh, to exhibit uh, the museum collection that's already uh, in place to hold a specialized exhibition in Lebanon and abroad uh, to document. A uh, the plastic art of the country and to organize artistic and cultural events. I mean, this is a very um, difficult task because we have to deal with flexibility and we have to deal also uh, with, uh, with, uh, with the collection. Um, and uh, more than that, it is to transform a building where, where it's, uh, you have to deal with a building that's already there. So it's not just designing from scratch. And uh, we have, you can see here, um, the building as they are uh, in the Current condition. It's a concrete structure one, and the other uh, hangar is a steel structure. And the students had to kind of to um, revitalize or come up with concept, with strong concept, uh, how to transform these into a museum. That's usually okay. This is an overview like uh, of the site, um, and uh, I give the floor to the students. We're going to start with the honorable mentions. Uh, to give a short presentation of each of like uh, two minutes uh, and explain their projects and uh, um, then we invite you outside like to have uh, drinks and some sweets. Okay? Yeah.
Ah, it's working. Okay, hello. It's working. Um, okay, so um, the site, uh, as Karim mentioned, uh, is uh, is an Alita, and uh, the site is a it's an empty village. Um, it's a newborn village. So the all of this, and you see in the in the middle, it's a plan for the village, but the village isn't built yet. Um, and uh, you see the surroundings vill villages around it. Um, the idea is to build the new residential uh, place and uh, to have like a, a cultural center, which was the museum. So when faced with a site like that, the program requested was an art museum. But I, uh, I proposed to add another program, which is a craft suit, and it's a very public market, um, to, have a, to have a duality of high-end art versus crafts and high-end visitors versus the general public. Uh, this results in democratizing art, and art becomes for all. And it's not uh, just uh, high-end users and high-end artists. Uh, there's a social merge and clash uh, that's happening on site through art. So this is the site. Um, you have a hotel and a mzar on both ends. And uh, we have the, this is the exi existing structure in the middle. <coughs> The idea was to create a public um, path or highway that um, that goes that slits throughout the site from the hotel to the mzar, and um, this created an extension of the existing structure um, in a morphing uh, <clears throat> nature, where uh, the same structure is repeated and um, and extended in both sides so that you can invite uh, both visitors of the hotel and uh, of the Mzar into the, into the museum. And you can see the connection here made to both uh, structures. Then uh, the indoor formal um, artistic high-end uh, spaces were covered and the outdoor was left uncovered to house the craft suit, and, uh, which is the very public market. So this is just a diagram for the idea. Uh, you have the optimum nature of an informal suit, which is a linear nature. Uh, you have the optimum nature of the art gallery, which is a loop. Um, and people are free to uh, check out the art in that loop. And when you merge them, you have, um, you have the second shape. And um, when you further want to take the spaces another step further, um, you create like a morphing snake in between. And there were, this is where the two um, entities overlap, and this is where high-end users get to see the suit, and uh, the general public get to see the arts. <clears throat> so this is a very rough uh, diagram of um, of panels that uh, dictate where the suit starts and where the suit ends, and where the hi high-end art on the other side starts and ends. Um, this diagram showing the structure versus the panels that um, divide the suit and the high-end art, and the roofing system, which is louvers for the outdoor, and uh, a, uh, the existing roof for the indoor uh, high-end art. Okay, so if you wanna take a, if you wanna look at it and see the entrance, uh, you see this duality between the high-end art on the right and the uh, public suit on the, on the left. And you can see how both can clash and merge and interact at the same time. Um, yeah. And um, you can also see that uh, throughout the panels that divide the public market and the high-end art, um, you have glass divisions so that people can look in and look out, and there's always this visual interaction and spatial interaction between the two programs. And you can also tell, you can see the, <clears throat> the indoor, outdoor, formal, informal um, entities. This is from the other side. Uh, this is, if you remember the other uh, diagram, from the hotel, coming from the hotel. So um, the idea was to have this dual entrance where people, the public is lured in because, I mean, in a new village, it's very hard to bring in people into an art museum. So the idea was to 
try to create the cultural hub by luring as many people in as possible. This is the final um, final 3D for it. You can see the everything that is covered in louvers is the outdoor suit, and you have the art uh, loop on the other side. It's a plan where you can see the people going more. You can see the structure, which, uh, first of all, of the suit from uh, from the rock, which houses the Mzar, to the other side, which is the hotel. And you can see people coming, lured, being lured in both sides of the of the space. This is the circulation I talked about before, the linear circulation of the public market versus the looped circulation of the high-end art. Um, you can see here the duality of uh, in the second and third uh, elevation and section. You see how in the second one the, the market is very public, it's outdoor, it's very informal versus you see the section of the arts and you can see how it's very um, very formal, very structured. And you can see the contrast between the two. It's also a section that shows the contrast between the market and the the high-end art inside. Thanks. My name is Mazen Zayn. <laughs> uh, honorable mention also. So the basic idea was uh, I saw the museum, the factory, as two different opposite structures. One uh, hangar and a uh, steel structure and one concrete building. And uh, what I proposed was to have these connections between these two structures uh, I act that act as exhibition spaces uh, inside, the sta inside the museum and to have them connected with one, within one spine of the next to these three spaces. So uh, this is the site plan, and there's a diagram. The site plan shows how uh, it's connected to the street and the parking, and it goes uh, through one uh, spine. And then these uh, three, uh, I call them one of the three concrete boxes, they intersect the two uh, structures with the axis on, from different points, and uh, they act also as a vert from a vertical circulation and a horizontal circulation inside these boxes. So you always have this all around circulation. In the next slide, this is a ground floor with the diagrams and elevations. It shows how the flow within the museums uh, from the entrance from the, uh, the, uh, the point, and then you enter, and then you have the cafeteria from one side and the installations in the open space in the hangar. And these three, the three boxes act one as sculpture, one for periodic, and one for painting exhibition. Um, finally, uh, now this are, are three, uh, one exterior shot showing the facade, the, how these three boxes emerge, and uh, one, two interior shots that show how you have the painting exhibition with platforms that are on a second, on another level. They overlook their work of art and uh, uh, from one, uh, from different perspectives, and uh, you have these slight slit like. Uh, uh, like, like uh, openings, they are co uh, continuous on the shapes. And finally, you have here, this is an interior uh, shot, a night shot that shows uh, the inside the painting exhibition. You have the exhibition of paintings and uh, the platform of the uh, upper level with the circulation all around, looking through inside. And the My name is uh, Ali Khudr and I tied with uh, Tessa for third place. And uh, my project is called the Camouflaged Identity because, uh, well, starting off, uh, it deals with the site as a fragmented element composed of several smaller pieces, with the centerpiece being the two buildings that we are supposed to convert into a museum. Um, and the idea behind my project was to sort of melt all of the different surrounding elements of the site onto my site and create a hub that allows you to circulate to all other places while integrating programs in these places. So um, you start off from the Mazar, which is higher than the level down, and um, instead of there being a cliff over here, which used to exist, you could actually continue walking, and then instead of walking on a 
hill, you start walking on the roof, and the roof is planted with vineyards, so uh, it helps the building sort of create an economic model for itself. Then you start circulating downwards through ramps and all of these passageways that take you to different areas. There's a winery to the left over there, and, and there's uh, a restaurant that connects you over there. And uh, also, one very important part of uh, <laughs> the building was integrating uh, environmental systems inside of it because it was uh, it's situated in a, well, pretty much natural settings. You have a very beautiful valley with forests on one side and another valley on the other side. And it was very important to keep this whole environmental and eco-friendly aspect about the building. So uh, it deflects winds naturally, it collects rainwater to, for the vines, and it collects sunlight to power itself and some homes because it produces an excess. And it passively heats and cools itself when it needs to. Um, exterior renders. And this is the entrance over here. And these are the louvers on the southern and the eastern facades, which are supposed to block out the sun when it hits it. And uh, the last slide is some interior renders, which look black now. But there's a view from the library onto the entrance, the main hall, and one of the exhibition spaces inside. <laughs> Please welcome uh, Cezanne Amour and Gabriela. Okay, um, my name is Tessa and I won third prize also. Um, so I called my project The Naturally Artificial, Breaking the Boundaries Between Nature and Art. So um, I was interested in nature because of course the land was surrounded by it and by um, with art since we had to um, do an art museum and how I could combine both in an architecture. So what I did is I balanced out nature and art, 50 by 50, and I started blurring the lines, be the limits between interior and exterior um, spaces. So this was the initial plan, which had its own structure, and I extended the structure. Then I started dismantling and scattering the interior spaces so I can bring nature in. And also I started playing with the leveling of the, the land because of its surrounding landscape. Um, this is the result of the ground floor plan. Um, I started after placing trees um, so I could, I, I could frame views and also um, they would be like also um, art objects and also I would place art on them. And so this is how also I started linking nature and art. Um, this is a view here of um, an exterior perspective. Um, this is a second view. As you can see here, the interior gardens. And this is a third view where you can see like how I'm framing trees. Um, okay. um, then I thought of um, a tree and um, how um, it has many branches and every branch is a unique um, space, but they're all like interconnected and interrelated. And I asked also the question whether architecture can develop the way forests do. Um, so what I wanted to do is not like create a linear path like in conventional museums. I wanted to create just one entry point mm -hmm. and from that like multiply the possibilities of circulation for the users. Um, those were the different layers of my project between the art installation and I created also another mezzanine layer, the lighting layer and the exposed ducts. And Mm. This was the mezzanine um, floor plan. And this is the ground floor circulation. So as you can see, there's one uh, entry point and then you have many different possibilities and for the mezzanine also and all this like just combined. And this is my project. My name is Abdelrahman Hamoud, and uh, this is my partner, Christina Atiyeh. Our The title of our project is uh, Two Trails, Two Experiences. And the way this is going to work is we're going to talk about the concept first, then a couple of extra features that we that we added into the project. Um, OK, so the concept derived from this uh, historical uh, map, um, we were interested in all these elements around our site and integrating the museum with our site. 
um, there was this, we were really amazed by this um, uh, old plaster factory that was um, on our site and we wanted to integrate it, our building within it and we wanted to integrate it also with the shrine and with the garden itself and this alone became, um, the site alone became a museum, a historical museum itself. So by doing this we wanted to integrate um, a public path within our building to allow for um, not only um, high end users to come and access the building and pay for it, but allowing for different um, uh, the public to come and access the museum from a distance and appreciating appreciating art from a distance. Uh, and to this extent, the way that the project ended up working, if I can just go back to the last slide, is we ended up framing different elements of the surrounding landscape and also creating different pathways within the building itself that overlook the. Uh, uh, the artworks and the installations that we have in the interior. The final result is what you can see over here. The image at the top is a section which shows the connection between the old factory, which Christina mentioned before, and the, uh, the entrance, which you can see on the left. The top view at the bottom so shows the general layout of the, uh, of the entire project, with again the factory on the right, the Mzar on the left, and uh, an outdoor theater which we integrated toward the south, as this was also an uh, important aspect of the, the site. Uh, itself. Now uh, another thing that we thought about through uh, the design process are the environmental factors that are uh, that could be integrated into the project. What you see on the top left is a diagram showing the way that we tackled uh, air ventilation and uh, solar, uh, solar incidents. The way it worked is that we used the storage spaces which would not be accessed uh, most of the time as sort of solar buffers on the east and west in order to deflect uh, the solar heat during the hot uh, the hot days of the year. In addition to that, which was probably best illustrated in the section below, the different circulation elements were designed in such a way that air could be circulated from the prevailing winds to the different, uh, um, the different functions within the, the building itself. Mm -hmm. Lastly, what you can also see in the section are a number of light wells that we integrated in order to reduce the lighting load inside the building and to introduce the natural lighting into uh, the building and the different exhibitions in the interior. Lastly, these are just a bunch of general perspectives that we uh, took of the building just to show the different moods and the different, um, you know, the different systems that are working inside the building. Uh, the one on the bottom left, for instance, again shows uh, the, the natural lighting, so does the one above that. The w image in the top left corner shows the, different, uh, shows the way that the public path overlooks the, uh, the private exhibition in the interior and uh, so does the one in the middle right, which shows the pathway leading toward the factory and um, the one on the bottom right is obviously just a, um, an image of the entrance, again showing the public path and the private path. And the one on the top right is just uh, an image of the public path looking up toward a, a landscape that we placed on the roof for relaxation and as a, also as a thermal buffer for, uh, for heat load and, uh, and other environmental factors. And that's it. That was second place. That was second place. Okay, so um, we, I'm Wa'el Mashini and... Sarah Navarma. Yeah. And this is uh, kind of the title for our project, The Dividing Link. Um, as you know, it's, uh, it's a museum, so there's an existing structure, and the whole concept, the whole concept was that um, we use the structure and we add to it the spaces that were needed and don't fit in the existing structure. Um, so at the beginning, this is the first phase before we had any design concept and it was the site analysis phase. So from the beginning we were really interested in the structure itself, not just the surrounding and the site. So what we started was, you can see diagrams of the space inside, we studied the textures and the spaces and how they were actually divided. And the second diagram we studied the, the exterior facade and how, uh, actually this was a diagram for <coughs> for the, the materials on the outside and uh, how uh, eroded the facade was. Um, and then we started with our concept. Basically, we had four main concepts. Um, the first one was to focus on the art, to glorify it. Um, also, new seeps in the old, so we're still keeping the old, but we're adding something new that kind of contrasts it. Um, bold gesture, something where you can literally see what's added and see the old uh, structure as it is. And uh, as I said, contrasting in materiality. Also, um, this lower diagram explains kind of how the, um, the exhibition spaces are going to be housed in the existing, and then what we're adding is 
for example, the library, the tea room, souvenir shops, spaces which uh, do not function as exhibits. So because we were really interested in the actual structure itself from the beginning, we decided to have that as exhibition space. And everything which was non-exhibition related would go into a new structure that would not be a part of the old. Um, this is an early kind of, uh, we have a sketch and then a collage <laughs> of the early, early concept, <laughs> how we wanted to introduce this alien structure that housed everything. But Something that was really contrasting to the exhibition, but at the same time, it was still a part of it. Yeah. So, so just, yeah. Yeah, sorry, to explain just the concept, uh, the mass scene concept, um, we have the old structure, and then we added to it the, the areas which were missing. Okay. And then we used the new structure as to, to ha use it as circulation space as well, not just housing different functions so that we could put them together. Um, also, we want to use it to connect to the site, since the site had so many um, different aspects, such as the, the hotel and the mzar on the hill. And then we actually used uh, lines and uh, forms in the site to uh, shape the final museum and have it actually reflect the site. And be directional towards some things on site. Um, just uh, also this shows again in the circulation diagram you can see through the circulation the structure that we're adding can take you kind of to many levels and many um, directions on the site so you're kind of creating these loops and circulation paths which didn't exist before um, yeah okay and this is just a concept de detail that we had uh, which was kind of the the new structure actually flowing into the old structure uh, because it was very heavy concrete and then the floors would seep into the uh, old structure and not actually touch the sides. So it was like uh, a mix between the old and new, not actually uh, really interconnecting, but having like a floating space within the old space. Um, this is the kind of end result. So you're seeing, uh, you do see the contrast, you do see what we're adding and then you see um, the um, the existing structure from the exterior, but once you enter the space, they kind of mix and you're not sure where you are anymore. And you can see that in the section in the diagram clearly where the spaces um, intersect. intersect. That's it. anything really 
to implement anything big. So we just want to have few simple ideas that you can help us and I'm sure you can help us a lot. So uh, I wish that you can, stay there, you can agree on a date and that you will come all and we will receive you there for a little uh, Thank you. <laughs> drink, shall we say. Sorry, would you please... Uh,